today, young gents, is some local and icy circuits. Okay. And I'm going to start by revising really the basic components and how they react when we put, connect them in an AC circuit. So if we connect into a circuit with a sine wave current flow okay this is we would call the applied voltage E plus side minus side current flow and this is R and it's equal to ZR yeah because once we go into AC circuits we have to start considering impedance as opposed to resistance so it's A resistor, that's called impedance. If we draw the on an act on a XY axis positive negative on the X axis and we drew the voltage waveform. So that would be a lie. Yeah. So that's the applied voltage, that's the current would flow, and they are in phase. V and I are in phase. So we can, for all the circuits, we're going to draw what's called a phasor diagram. For that circuit, it would have the current I In phase, so they're drawn at the same angle with the voltage. There's no phase difference between them. The only reason I've left a gap between the two is so they're not written over top. from resistance to impedance. Z in ohms. To cover. Quantity. There's no art, no art. impedances of vector quantity, magnitude, and an angle. Yep. So the overall impedance phasor Or 
resistance, i.e. a circuit with only resistance and no inductance or capacitance involved. Looks like this, where that is. Z bar is equal to the resistance of the resistor. And that can be represented by R ohms which is ZR is the R ohms angle zero degrees or radians working radians here. All right. For all degrees. Or it's equal to that's polar form. Remember what the other form is that we can have? Rectangular form, which is R plus zero J. Note where the units go in the two different forms. In answering questions in the examination, you will be expected to use the correct format and, and units for final answers. Yep. So that's rectangular form. So what we're saying here is a per resistor in an AC circuit will act just like it would if it's in a DC circuit. There won't be any phase shift, no funny business going on, just straight resistance and Ohm's law applies. Okay? Yeah. You're all happy with that for per resistance. Okay. What what why Oh, because the, the need to express it in, in impedance is because we're applying an AC signal. Yeah? If the, if the circuit is per resistance and you know it is, and you're not interact, you're not including any um, reactive components, then you can just treat it in a normal way. It's only when you start to consider what's going to happen when reactive components are added to the circuit, which we're now going to do, that you need to consider an impedance form of magnitude versus angle. So this is, in this one, that, that's the magnitude, and that's the angle, and that can be in degrees or radians. Yeah, this is, perhaps we ought to expand that a little bit and remind you of what this is. Just move these down a bit. So that number here, that's the magnitude. That's how long the line is. Yeah, in the phasor diagram. And, the, and that is the angle. In mathematical terms, they call those modulus and argument. But we're more we're in a more detailed situation here. That's, that's that's how many ohms it is, and that's what angle it's acting at. Yeah. Okay. And it polar form is where you're usually going to want your final answer, because we want to know how many amps are flowing, for instance. Whereas here, this bit is the horizontal component. And this is the vertical component. Remember, um, so um, with a complex number, a phasor such as that with an angle associated to it has got a 
horizontal component and a vertical component. R and a J component. Yeah. Complex numbers. But we need to be able to use both forms to do the calculations I want you to do. Yeah. Alright, and we know with, with our calculators, you should remember from before, that we got functions on the calculator to switch between polar and rectangular form. Alright? So it's only the fact that we want to consider analyzing circuits with um, reactive components in an IC applied voltages that we need to consider impedance. Yeah, what we're saying is the circuit is per resistance, there's only a per resistor, there's no coils, no capacitors. It's difficult to achieve absolute per resistance because, for instance, if you had a wire around resistor, you've got a coil. It's going to have, have, a, have a portion of inductance. Yeah. If you coil any of your cables up, if you think about it, if you you know if you get a extension lead on a wind up coil, that'll give you a current rate in completely unwound and a current rate in while it's wound up, and that's the inductive effect that's going to cause heating in the cables. They have have that. I don't know. I've never seen one like that, but. But you're supposed to wind them all the way out, particularly if you're going to load them up completely. Okay, all okay with um, per resistance, yeah? I'm getting no dissenting voices, so I'll move on. What we'll move on to now is the unachievable per inductance. So, we should bear in mind, it's totally unachievable in a real circuit. Because an inductor is a coil of wire, and that wire has at least some resistance. Alright, but first we consider the abstract per inductance situation. So we're talking about a circuit with IC applied voltage, current flowing, Through an inductor, yeah, that has an inductance L, that's an applied voltage E. Okay, if we drew our waveform diagrams again on, a, on an XY axis through so time, okay, I'm going to do the ang the the angles in degrees so it's easier in this instance now more often than not we'll probably be working in radians and 90s there okay now if we consider that the voltage again red as the in phase component so it goes up to a peak like so and that should be crossing at 360, so we'll just move that. Yeah. What happens with inductance is it's 90 degrees, the current is going to be a full 90 degrees out of phase to the voltage. All right. Current I lags by ninety degrees or pi over two radians. Phaser diagram it 
looks like this. The current is lagging because positive angles go clockwise, anti-clockwise. So we're minus 90 degree angle between voltage and current. So the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. The impedance phaser An inductor and a positive on the computer. Get up. So when we do some calculations, why? Positive angle compared exactly the black color. Yeah. So let's have a look. Let's not say that. The impedance of the inductor, ZL, we can calculate is equal to the inductive reactance, right, which we can get from either 2 pi F times L, or it's equal to L bigger L if we've got the frequency in radian second form. So looking at that, this is the impedance. That is the inductive reactance. Frequency, that's in hertz. This has been a, these are both in ohms. It's two. Frequency in hertz. Omega angular right. so two ways of writing ZL ZL is equal to Two radians, or positive 90 degrees. That's to the four. Or ZL is equal to zero plus X. 
Jared. So there's a kind of knowledge thing that you need to have that an inductor, impedance-wise, has got a positive angle associated with it. Yep. Resistor, no angle. Inductor, a positive angle. Right? Okay? Yeah, okay, yeah. So I can move on now then, yeah? And guess what we got? So I've got the second half of the cycle well. This charge, fuel weapon gaps of direction, this charge map, this charge is the charge map of the design of the It's going to add completely to what it does in a DC circuit. Well, capacitors are used, one of the biggest uses for capacitors in AC circuits is the power pack of correction. Yeah. I won't go into detail. For the as you're going to see in a minute, I'm going to pull the, so you're talking about motors, transformers, welding sets, etc. Most of the stuff, heavy, heavy. with voltage. Yeah. What that means power wise is you have to supply more current to get the same usable power because of this out of phase relationship. Yeah. So that means for a given load, if you don't deal with that power factor which is related to this angle we're talking about between voltage and current, if you don't deal with that, then you've got for a given load you've got a you've got to transmit more current down the cables, so the cables have to be bigger. So the transmission system has got more load on it. So the, the supply authority will penalise you for poor power factor. Yeah. So the opposite of, as you're going to see in a minute, the opposite of inductance is capacitance. When you add a capacitor to the circuit, you start to draw the angle back towards unity. They don't try and go all the way, because that's there's a there's a diminishing returns thing on the amount of capacitance and you don't want to risk um, another thing called resonance either so they don't go all the way but they improve that power factor to get more power down the same cables as simple as we'll study it in more detail if you do level six all right yeah but that's that's one use anyway in ac circuits you're using them in um, power supplies to rectify DC and smooth them, that kind of thing. Okay, filters. Right. In, um, in, 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 to rectify to a DC, and then they chop that DC up into an AC waveform that you can vary the frequency of. So you vary the speed of an AC motor. So, if we put this as to our XY, we have, again, the voltage is the in-phase component, a 
Okay. We then, this time, have the current. Leading. By 90 degrees. Yep. So this time, the peak in the current is ahead of that in the voltage. That's the current. That's the volts. Or pi over two radians. Yep. That has the voltage. Plus ninety degrees. So if we're thinking about the phases going round in a circle anti-clockwise, the current is ahead of the voltage. Yep. In the last one, we think about the phases going round in an anti-clockwise direction, current is behind. Equally there, we could say the voltage is the current. We could normally say what that one is in zero degree. In some cases, that's easier to set the current equal to zero degree. It just depends on the circuit you're analysing. Right? But you'd normally fix one of them zero. And in here, we'd, we'd probably say the current, uh, we, we go with current leads the voltage, but we'd be equally correct to say the voltage is bad for the current of the yeah. And over here, the impedance phaser. If we have zero degrees step there, the impedance of this circuit, ZC, is 90 degrees in a negative direction. Again, all traffic is part of the situation. Then we can add that dead C is equal to XT, the capacitive reactance, so that's impedance. Capacitor in ohms. Capacitive reactance. Again in ohms, which is equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc. over gives the angular frequency in the
So there are the three individual components and how they sit within um, or how they react in an AC structure. Okay? Well, all happy with that? Thing to remember, the resistor's got no angle associated with it. The inductor's got a positive 90 degree angle associated formula for that is to understand the right thing and remember that. Do enough calculations to look at. Alright. So what we're going to move on to now is real circuits where we've got combination of these components and what happens. So first of all, if we take series RL. have an example circuit. where we got complex quantities does not include an angle, you have seen it's zero. Yeah. So here I'm setting the phase relationship of the voltage, I'm making voltage the reference phase. Alright. Yeah. We've got a current I and a resistor R at 10 ohms. And we've got a inductive reactance. I'm given. I'm doing it in. Well, I'm given the reactance here. Eight ohms angle. Ninety degrees. There's a positive ninety degree angle associated with. But I haven't given you given the inductance in this problem. L. I've just given you the inductive reactance straight off. Okay. Now, what happens here is, if we take the phasor diagram, what happens with the phasor diagram is, we have a voltage E, the in phase can there's E. It's at zero degrees. What type of what phase is the current due to the resistor? What's the angle associated with the resistor? Resistor. No angle. Yeah. So we put in here. It gives us a current, actually, sorry, I didn't want to put R, I want to put IR. So it gives us a current, IR, that's in phase. What was the cut phase relationship of the current due to the inductor? Well, 
Now the impedances is positive. Go back to the inductor page. For voltage and current, the current lags by 90. So you get a negative current phasor. Yeah, so current goes IL down there. Yeah. So this current here, the total current flowing in the circuit, is the addition of those two phases. Yep. It's got a horizontal component, IR, and a vertical component, IL, and then the you complete the parallelogram and the diagonal with the total current flowing. And that's got a phase angle in here. We'll calculate in a minute. Okay. Impedance wise, impedance wise, we've got R ten ohms, the zero angle component, and we've got ZL, better call that ZR, aren't Well, ZR there, ZL, and then the overall impedance of the circuit. ZT is there. And again, We've got an angle in here, like so. And magnitude wise, those two angles will be the same. Right. Total impedance. Two ways of looking at it. Give me one way. Okay. Can you see a way of dealing with an old fashioned way? of dealing with the total impedance. Sorry? Not quite. But you could use trig, yeah. If we look at these um, impedance diagram, we've got a triangle with a, high, a right angle triangle. We know the length of one, two sides. We know ZL is eight. We know R, ZR is ten. So, what's the relationship right hand? We want to know the length of this line, the ZT line. We know the length of the ZL and the ZR line. Pythagoras, yeah. yeah. So, by Pythagoras, ZT is equal to root ZR squared plus ZL squared equals root of 10 squared plus 8 squared <laughs> Z 
equals 12.8 ohms, I believe. Yeah. So that gives us the magnitude, but we also need the angle. So if we got this triangle here now, just isolate this. We've got this triangle. We want to find this angle in here associated with that phaser. What are you going to use for that? Trigonometry. Yeah. And all right, we've calculated the length of the Z line, but we've put, we could have rounded that. So what trig relationships do we use when we know the opposite and the adjacent side? Tap. So we can say tan of the angle is equal to 8 over 10. Yep. So how do we get the angle out of that? We do an angle is equal to tan of the minus 1 of 8 over 10. Now for uh, thirty eight seven degrees. Yep. Got your calculating radians. No, you need it in degrees. Because I've got the half in degrees. Of 8 over 10, 0 0.8. Yeah, 38.7. <laughs> okay. So, let's just go up here and say we can also it as ZT is equal to ZR plus ZL J. So that is uh, resistance is ten. Plus zero J and the inductance is zero plus eight J. How do we add two complex numbers together? We add together the two components, and we add together the two vertical components. So in rectangular form, <coughs> yeah, Z is equal to 10 plus 8 JMs. And only a calculator can convert because the final answer in that form doesn't tell us how many ohms it is. Okay, but can you remember how you do that on your calculator? on the plan button. Put the 10 in, push the shift, and then uh, the comma the close brackets and then put in the 8 and it gives you 12.8 round of 3 
triangles. That'll be O's. Angle. Just change my calculator to degrees. Which is what we got by the method. So that method, what your calculator is doing with that information when you do the conversion process. It's doing two calculations. Alright, but that's Alright, so that's the total impedance of this circuit. The T. Alright, if we now want to calculate the current. I is equal to E over the double distance. Okay, now if we want to multiply or divide complex numbers, we're best to do it in polar form. Multiply or divide. Adding and subtraction is easier in rectangular form. Alright, we don't want Half a dozen conversions back to 422. We can't avoid that, but we're involved in converting more and more values to get in the same form, and I would recommend polar form for multiplying by rectangular form. The voltage is 24 degrees. The impedance is 12. Of the denominator into the magnitude of the min rate. So you do 24 over 12.8 angle naught minus 38.7 degrees. What? Now you have a fine master. Must have the angle, the angle symbol is also important, minus 38.7 degrees. Yep. So that's where the positive angle associated with the gives you a negative current, a lagging current. Okay. Anyone remember that word we use? Check that out to, to check whether we should be leading or lagging. Remember it from the And that's what we've just been doing. We've been doing an inductive circuit, and we've got current after lag and voltage. Passive.
Remember, this is what you must remember, though, because we're eventually going to go into circuits where we've got both a capacitor and an inductor in it. But this is what the circuit is overall at the current frequency. What we must remember is the reactants of these components will change with frequency because XL is 3 pi FL. C is equal to 1 over 2 pi F FT. So if we up the frequency, the capacitive reactance is going to get smaller. Yeah. So the overall leading or lagging nature of a circuit can change if frequency changes or other things change. So it's what the circuit is overall, as a check. If we now ask overall inductive, because the inductive reactance is bigger, then we can check civil as a useful check just to make sure you haven't got a positive negative angle wrong in your calculations and end up with the wrong answer. Fine. Yeah. Right. How are we doing? We'll try RC circuit now. have a 10 ohm resistor. Six ohm three angle. Phaser diagram has uh, E on the horizontal reference phaser. degrees. Now I'm going to keep this line as the other one. So that's ZC. ZR. And the result of Fraser again. That angle in there, 90 degrees. That's the addition of those two in there, and again, we've got an angle. Again, we can split this. 
Uh, ohms and the angle is 10 to the minus 1 the 6 over 10 and if you try that that should come out at Angles in this area, negative, so it's, it's about now in the four quadrants. Yep. When you do the conversion between um, rectangle and roller, that will be the number of particles. But we know it's negative because of the phase of the 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 Yep. Alternatively, we have ZT is R minus ZR, sorry. Uh, R minus ZT. So that is 10 minus 6. Then when you convert, you should get that this triangle. Convert using your calculator. 